Welcome to the Victor V Neck Dolman. We are going to begin this video tutorial by cutting out our pattern pieces. I'm using a projector. As you can see, the pattern piece is projected onto the fabric. If you're looking for a money saving alternative with PDF patterns, I totally suggest getting into projectors. It's way easier than printing paper and then putting that paper together and then cutting it out. So let's get started. Our required pieces are cut out. We have two shirt, um, they're the same, front and back is the same, one neckband, two sleeves, and one pocket. To begin, we're going to do our pocket. Now the pocket is optional, so if you're not doing the pocket, you can fast forward through all of this. So to do this pocket, we need to fold in a quarter of an inch these edges here, 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 and here, and then we fold this down two inches. So what I've done is I've cut some fusible interfacing. So one side is bumpy, it has glue on it. One side is smooth, that's the side our iron goes on. And this is just to help make it a little easier for me to maintain that quarter inch. I'm gonna fuse this on and then I'll fold it over like that and gives it a little more um, structure also. So I just cut a few of these pieces and I'll just lay them on bumpy side down because otherwise it will um, get glue all over our iron. And that's never a good thing. And I'm just tearing them off to fit. Okay. I'm just going to put a little pressing cloth on top. You'll want to follow the directions for your fusible interface and usually it's a plastic piece that gets rolled up with the bolt. And if you buy it at Joann's, they usually, whatever yardage of it you bought, they cut that off and include it with it. So I'm just pressing here. So I press down and then I take the pressure off and I move it. So as I move it, I'm not maintaining the pressure. So I'm doing this to the wrong side of my fabric. It's the right side, it's blue. Okay, so with that on there, I'm going to start folding my edges in. So with this folded, I'll put this edge in.
Oh, it's hot. Hot, hot. Last side. Okay, that is hot. Hot, 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 hot. I'll clip in there. Doesn't need it, but I'll put one there. Next, we're just going to fold this down two inches. So I got my steel rule here. Good thing about a steel rule is you don't have to worry about it stretching out like a tape. Okay, next I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'm just going to sew down here. And you can get creative with this stitch here. This is going to hold our pocket in. It'll be visible from this side too, so you could do like a creative stitch if you have any on your machine. If you choose to do that, you might want to reinforce this edge with some more of your fusible interfacing before doing that. Okay, so I'm at my machine. Um, my stitch length for straight stitch when I turn the machine on is 2.5, but this is like a top stitch, so I want it actually a little longer. So I'm gonna bump it up to 3.5. And I am gonna want to back stitch this. So I hold my tails as I start. Get a couple stitches in. So to position the pocket, I turn my projector back on. And it's kind of hard to see because it's kind of bright in here now, but here is the placement mark, the suggested placement mark. If you want a better fit to your body, you could lay this pattern piece on yourself and then put the pocket where you think it looks best. So because I had turned this off, I have to now reposition it. Okay, that looks pretty good. So my pocket placement. And then I'm just gonna take some pins and pin it there to secure it. Okay, we're ready to go over to the sewing machine and sew it on. We're gonna sew it on with a straight stitch and pull these clips off. And we'll sew down the, 
this edge, this, this, and this, leaving this open because it's a pocket. And if you close that up, then it's useless. All right, so we're going to sew on the pocket. We are at the sewing machine. I have a stretch needle in. I didn't mention that earlier, but when I did the pocket too, it was the same needle. And I want to sew this about an eighth inch away from this edge here. Oops, take my thread with me. Okay, so my needle is gonna move and then I'm going to make my stitch length a little bit shorter than what it was before. I want my needle to be down and don't forget to back stitch. When you get to the corner here, it's needle down, foot up, pivot. Needle down, foot up, pivot. If your machine can't be set to have the needle down, uh, when you finish sewing, just roll it down. Next, we're going to sew our neckband into a circle. So we're lining up the short ends. We're also gonna do our shoulder seams. So right sides together, our shirt front and back. Okay, so I'm gonna take the neckband to my sewing machine. I'm just gonna run a straight stitch down this edge here. And then I'm going to take my shirt to my serger and I will serge the shoulder seams, both of them. All right, at the sewing machine, I'm gonna sew the neckband into a loop. So I'm gonna hold my tails, needle down. Don't forget to back stitch. Okay, now to the serger. Okay, so here we are at the serger. I'm just going to do my shoulder seams. So I'm starting at the inside of the neckline and I'm working out to where our sleeve will be sewn on. In this next step, we're going to sew the neckband on and it's a little bit different than the typical neckband um, technique we use here at Rain City. We're gonna sew the neckband to the wrong side of the shirt then we're gonna fold it over to the right side and it's going to encase the seam in it. So because my fabric here for my neckband is the same on both sides, the right and the wrong side, I'm drawing some red lines on it on the wrong side so that you can tell the difference as we work this step. Okay, so red lines, wrong side. Red, wrong, red, wrong. Okay, so we're going to open the seam up and then we're gonna fold it wrong sides together. And I recommend taking this over to your iron and giving it a good press so it'll stay where you want it to. So I will be right back. Hello, hello, I'm back. Okay, so what I did was I pressed it. Here's my seam. So I've pressed it so that it's folded with the wrong sides together. And then I marked the neckband on the opposite side of the seam. So now it's in half. So it's marked one half. This side, this side. There's no pin here because the seam is there. And then all you do to mark the quarters is you bring your two marks together and you mark the center point for these two, okay? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Next, we are going to mark center front and center back on the shirt itself. 
We're only going to mark center front and center back because we're gonna use the shoulder seams as the other two points. And a lot of the times you can't do this, uh, use your shoulder seams as the other two marks because it's not even. But that is when the back is different than the front. If your back neckline is different, then your shoulder seams won't be the other quartered pieces. They'll, you'll have to fold your shirt again to figure out where they are. But because it's the same distance from here to here, well, it's the same distance from here to here. It's, it's already quartered. Okay, so here we go. Now, what we wanna do is pin this right side together, or pin the right side of our neckband to the wrong side of our shirt. And this seam here for the V can get quite bulky because you've already got the seam there, plus there'll be another seam when you sew it on. You want, might want to stagger this. So having the shoulder having this where your shoulder seam is, and we can do that. Another thing to remember when you're clipping this on is that your shoulder seams need to be towards the back of the shirt. So, raw edges, and this is a long neck band, so make sure you don't twist it when you clip it on. I like to use pins to make my center point marks because they're more precise and then I like to clip it on because it's more secure. And it's harder to run over a clip because it's so big. Okay. Just folding that back towards the back. Here's the back of the shirt, making sure that this is not twisted. Okay, now we're ready to take this back over to the serger and serge the neck band on. If you don't have a serger, you can use your sewing machine. Make sure you're using like a zigzag stitch or some other stretch stitch. And make sure that that stretch stitch isn't too wide and too long because then it becomes like a straight stitch and it has no stretch. Okay, here we are. We're gonna sew the neck band on. My shirt is facing down. My neck band is towards me. I find it easier to sew it this way because I'm going to manipulate that neck band more than the shirt. I'm just lining up these raw edges before I slide it underneath. Okay, so the goal is to just sew from point to point, the points being where we put our clips, and to gently stretch as needed just the neck band between those four points. All right, so to finish the surge, my needles are up. I'm gonna put my foot up and then I'm going to clear the piece from my needles and run it off. So that's what it looks like. Okay, our neckband is sewn on. What we're gonna do now is we're just going to fold this over the seam. So just folding it over and clipping it in place and you know what, giving it a nice press. Make sure that that seam is totally enclosed. Okay, I'm gonna take this over to my cover stitch machine and I'm going to sew the neckband down. So, like this, right along this edge. All right, I am at my cover stitch machine. I'm using a Janome 900 CPX and it is set up for, what's this stitch called? Chain stitch? I don't remember. Anyways, it's one needle. I have one 
a cone of regular Serger's Red Loaded, and then a cone of Holy Nylon. And my cone of regular Serger Thread is about to uh, rent out. So we're gonna play a little game of chicken and hopefully sew this on without it running out. Pressing my luck. just a few issues with my thread and my woolly nylon we got that neckband sewn on seam is enclosed okay so to do the V if you're doing the V I'm gonna turn this inside out this is my front you can tell because of my pocket outline and I'm just going to find that center front mark by lining up the shoulder seams. And it's right here. I'm going to put a pin in it to mark it. Hopefully not stab my hand. This is, this is a very thick spot, okay? So I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to, let me take that out. I'm going to sew a straight stitch about an eighth inch away from this edge here. So starting here and then sewing at an angle to my stitching that I did when I sewed the neckband in this last step, okay? And that's going to make the V. And you can do it on the back also, or you could just skip this step altogether if you don't wanna bother with it. So let's head over to the sewing machine. Okay, so here we are. This is my front. I'm gonna slide it under the machine, okay? It's very thick right here. My uh, foot is at this weird angle, so to help that, I can put a shim underneath it. So I'm just gonna roll by hand my needle down. Here's my shim and I made it using like three pieces of thin cardboard. I can slide this underneath it. I need those threads. So, Okay, so I'm going to sew this at an angle. So more like this. And you can just hand roll this. If it's easier for you, you are going to want to backstitch this front part. You'll tie in a knot the um, the end of this, kind of like you would a dart. long enough and I'm going to tie them off in a knot right here because I backstitched those. All right so we are almost done we just got to sew these sleeves on and then do our hem and voila that's it. So for the sleeves I'm going to mark center front or excuse me the center line and I just do that by folding them in half like so. So they're both marked. I'm gonna move one to the side and show you how to attach one of them. You attach them the same way, so one is good enough, right? Okay, so my shirt is laid open, right side up. This shoulder seam is towards the back of the shirt. The back of the shirt does not have the pocket on. I'm gonna take one of my sleeves and I'm gonna lay it right sides together at this seam. I'm gonna line up that center line mark I made. So right sides together, giraffes to the unicorn. Okay. 
Okay, so at this point, I'm ready to go over to the serger, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this corner, I'm gonna line it up here, and I'll sew all the way to the center mark here, okay? And then I'll remove my clip, and I'll continue sewing to this other corner, okay? So let's go over to the serger, and I'll show you how I do it. All right, let's sew this sleeve on. Sew the sleeves on, we'll get the hem done, and we will be done, done. Done, 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 done. Okay, those are my corners that I talked about. Lined up, my foot's up. Just gonna slide this under. I'm gonna get a few stitches in and then I'm gonna do some adjusting of this. Okay, we got our sleeve sewn on and we're almost done. We're gonna do the side seams now. So we're gonna fold it right sides together. There's the front of my shirt. There's the back of my shirt. And I'm going to line up the side seams. So also the side seam, lining up the raw edges all the way down. And then I'll repeat that on this other side. So let's go over to the serger and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, here we are at the serger. We're working on almost the last step. We are going to do the side seams. So this is my sleeve here. I'm just folding in half and lining it up. It's right sides together. Lots and lots of fabric here because this is a big shirt. All right, side seam's done. We're just going to fold up the hem of the sleeves and the um, bottom of the shirt one inch towards the wrong side. I'm giving it a press. You know, I mean, you don't have to if you have a calibrated eyeball. I don't. Well, I kind of do. Okay, let's go to the cover machine and get this done. All right, we're gonna hem. I'm using my Janome cover stitch. Um, I have three regular cones of serger thread loaded, one of which is about to run out. So that's wonderful. Uh, I'm doing two needles for this one. And yeah, that's it. And there you have it we're all done I hope you enjoy this video tutorial I use my most mismatched ugly fabric to try to make it easy to understand what was going on if you found it easy to understand and you like the video please subscribe to my channel and I'll sew with you next time bye